We've got two damaged pieces of dining room furniture that we are making elegant again. So far, we've lost the stripe on the table and glued the dining chair back together. That took care of the major damage. Now we need to address the details. We're gonna move on to touching up these legs. So since the top's gonna look so perfect, we don't want this to look beat. So we're gonna do a combination of touching it up, filling it in to really make it look good. There are a couple of methods we use to repair scratches and dents. Touch-up markers, burn-ins, and paints. Touch-up markers can cover up minor scratches and are the easiest to use. Just going over some of the areas that need color with a natural color. There's a brass cap that goes right here, and when they get loose, they start to scratch up the edge. So we're gonna touch all that up. I like to wipe off the excess. You can already see that it's helping a lot. So I'm just gonna move around all the legs and touch them up the same way. Another way, burn-ins are used for small dents. This uh, burn-in knife has actually two pieces here. This section, which is actually a heat regulator, this allows me to dial my heat from one to seven. There's different heat levels that I want to be at for different kinds of burn-ins. This is the actual burn-in knife. So what it's used for is heating up the resin. See how it's getting hot and melting onto the surface here? Then I rub the melted resin into the dents in the leg. I keep the tip moving so I won't damage the surrounding area with heat. Once the dents are filled, I apply burn-in balm over the melted resin. We're using a burn-in balm to pull off all the excess resin that's not used in the actual burn-in itself. The trick is to pull off the excess at the exact same time pressing down and keeping on the areas that you want it to stay. Finally, paint can be used for large scratches or to cover any filled areas. Now I'm gonna brush it on this edge with some dry pigmented color, spray it into some lacquer on this palette. As I brush on the paint, I check the color match. This is too dark, so I add light brown pigment to make it match. The color is looking good. The final step is a coat of satin lacquer over the top of the work I did to blend it all with the existing finish. There you have it. That does it for the base, but there's a few more touch-ups to do on the top. I'm trying to match the color here with some hot resin, melting it into little gashes here along this edge. I don't have the exact color, so I'm blending several together. I'm taking and I'm mixing a combination of those three into the little spot to formulate the color. And now Chris is going around the border of the table. He's painting on the edge. I think I'm going a little darker than we had originally to kind of set off the nice inlaid light colored wood on the top from the base. A few more burn-ins on the leaves and we're done touching up. We finished the fourth step on the table. Now it's time to finish the chair. Coming up, we run into some table complications. Our finisher's worst nightmare. Plus, will Lisa be pleased with the end result? It's a lot different than I've ever seen it. Next on Beyond Repair. Bring new life to tired furniture. Go to hgtv.com slash beyond repair for tips and tricks to refinishing furniture. Lisa's table came to us with a big stripe down the middle. But after a bit of work, it's on its way to becoming elegant again. The next step is adding a vinyl sealer. We're gonna use a high volume, low pressure spray system. And it's actually like a vacuum cleaner engine that runs it, so it's not very powerful, but it's gonna blow a nice, even fan of spray. We're gonna use a vinyl sealer. If the wood itself is contaminated, vinyl sealer will help to create a barrier between the contamination and the clear coat. We have a problem, a refinisher's worst nightmare, silicone contamination. That happens from years of putting polish and wax on the table that seeps slowly through the lacquer and embeds itself into the table. Even with stripping it, and sanding it, it still is inside of the table. Silicone, lacquer, hate each other. It's oil and water. Just through trial and error over the years, Chris and I have figured this out. If you put on a dust coat, which is, instead of spraying on a thick, nice coat like what Chris was doing, we just dust it really far off of the table and it just sprinkles down onto it. Then we lightly sand it. Then we do it again. And then we lightly sand it. Each time we do that, a little bit of the vinyl sealer will stick to those areas that it doesn't want to. And it'll slowly build up, and then we can start laying our lacquer over the top. It's a tedious process, it takes twice as long as normal. We're into it now. So after four dust coats, the sealer's doing the trick. Now it's time to put on the last layer of finish. 
We're gonna spray another few clear coats on the top of this table so that it's protected forever. Well, that's the last step. Now it's time to bring it to the customer. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hey, good, good to well, see you. We have your table back here where it belongs in the house this time. I can't wait. Ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Wow. Oh, my gosh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. I can't believe it. I'm shocked. It's a lot different than it was before. It's a lot different than I've ever seen it. I think this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, you've got the leaves to match. This yes, is, yes. Oh, that's amazing. The toughest part about this table was to match all the pieces together, the leaves to the, the rest of the table. It doesn't even look like the same table to me. It really no. doesn't. No nicks. No, yeah. yeah it just looks so nice. We also did some work on the legs. Let's just go take a look at that. All right. So what we did here is we were able to touch up a lot of these areas and do three different kinds of actual repairs on these legs to achieve this. And then we sprayed it with some lacquer over the top to kind of even it all out. It really did surpass my expectations. I never thought that they could restore the wood that was that old to that kind of beauty. So I am just absolutely thrilled.